The game is on the line. You have to drop a play or a strategy to help your team win. As you're diagramming this play, are you going to trust the athlete who has all the physical gifts or the athlete who is mentally tough? Think about it. Who are you going to trust in that moment? Games online. The athlete who has all the physical abilities but you, is not very mentally tough or the kid you know who's mentally tough, present, consistent, put in the work, eyes open. If you pick the athlete that is physically skilled, raise your hand. If you pick the athlete who's mentally tough, raise your hand. It's a tough question, huh? So scale of 1 to 10, how important is mental toughness in, in life? 10. 10. It's an easy, no-brainer. No-brainer. Same thing, sport, life, it's the same thing. Now question number two is, how much time are you investing in yourself? Or how much are your athletes investing in their mental game? Scale of one to ten. One to five? Yeah, maybe. I've, I've surveyed this question to thousands of athletes over the years. And it's all the time. The numbers, it's less than 10% of our mental energy or our energy from skill work Physical work and the mental game, it's less than 10%, but we all agree that mental toughness, look at Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, Serena, Michael Phelps, their, their mental game is off the charts. So why aren't we giving kids these tools? Who has heard of the term flow, being in a flow state? Coined by Dr. Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, flow is the most optimal state we can be as performers. It's in the zone. Think of the best performances you've ever had. Close your eyes right now. Think about whether you were coaching a game or, or playing or in life when you were completely engaged, in rhythm, confident. You had this endless energy. There was no sense of time. The activity was the reward, not the outcome. There was a sense of, of challenge. You were growing. You, were, you had a clear goal. Okay, eyes open. Were you thinking in those moments? Probably not. Bad thoughts are bad. Good thoughts are good. No thought is best. That quiet mind. That's where peak performance lives. Attitudes are contagious. Are you a vitamin or a virus? Are you a vitamin or a virus? Does the room light up when you enter or leave the room? You had to think about that for a second, didn't you? Does the room light up when you enter or leave the room? So your body language, your energy, how you speak to others, how you care, listen, empathy, it's contagious. We have what's called mirror neurons in our brain. We model and mirror what we see. At the same time, your thoughts are contagious to yourself. The most important conversation you have is with yourself. No one speaks to you more than you speak to yourself. But watch what happens. What you say to yourself is 10 times more powerful than what anyone can say to you. And if it's negative, it has seven times the power over that. So how is your self-talk? Think about someone you care about. If they made a mistake, they screwed up, would you go, you suck. Like, really? Like, what was that? Like, why are you even here? Like, you don't belong here. Would, would you say that to a, a close friend? Then why would you say it to yourself? I suffered from this really bad. As a two-sport athlete at Washington State, the lie of perfection. Thinking you have to be perfect. Giving yourself no margin for error. It's hard to be creative when you think you have to be perfect. Connection, not perfection. Connect with the game. Connect with your teammates. Be vulnerable. Victory goes to the vulnerable. There's a great book, guys, I want you to check out. It's by James Clear. It's called Atomic Habits. He said the number one tool for habit change is your identity. 
So how many people I say, oh, I have a sweet tooth. I'm not a morning person. I can't remember names. You've already failed. If you affirm, I'm a finisher. I have compassion. I give max effort. We give max effort. It helps shrink your focus to those keys that are in your control. So create in your back pocket for your self-talk, I've had success before, but there's a key element to make this even stronger. I want you to write down, how have I earned it? As in my preparation, my habits, my routines. I can't just give myself affirmations and not put in the work. So in order to have what I like to call internal credibility, I speak it and I do it. I'm an elite performer, but I train like an elite performer. I sacrifice. I get nine hours of sleep. I drink water. I stretch. I'm a phenomenal teammate. I put in the work. No one's outworked me. Therefore, I'm going to trust my training and just compete. Do you see what I'm saying? Because if you just gave yourself affirmations, like let's say you have a garden, you can go to your garden and say, there are no weeds, there are no weeds, there are no weeds, there are no weeds, but you're not weeding? You're going to have some weeds in your garden, yes or no? You guys know about the power of yet, right? You've heard of that before? I can't hit a curveball yet. I haven't mastered finishing on my offhand yet. I haven't mastered my two-handed backhand yet. I haven't mastered the skill of empathy as a leader yet. I'm working on it. So understanding that the brain is called neuroplasticity. Change our thoughts and behaviors we create. Our brain literally can change. You can change your life. What you think about and focus on, you attract. Facts. So I tell a story of Bill Buckner. 1986 World Series, playing first base. Red Sox are beating the Mets by a run. Red Sox hadn't won a World Series since 1917, since they traded Babe Ruth. They're about to win the World Series. Two runners on, bottom of the ninth. Ball gets hit to Buckner. What happens? Right through his legs. Two runners scored. Mets beat the Red Sox. They lose game six. They lose game seven. But what if I told you this? What if I told you this is the microphone? You're going you to just hold this up. You're, you're going to film. Sorry. Bill Buckner, 12 days earlier, was on an interview on TV, and the reporter asked him, what do you think about the World Series? This is what he said. You know, the nightmare is that I don't want to be the guy that lets the ball go between my legs that costs us the World Series. <laughs> Say, what? The nightmare is I don't want to be the guy that lets the ball go between my legs that costs us the World Series. Thoughts become things. Energy flows where focus goes. So the last story I'm going to tell you, again, think best case scenarios. Um, I got enrolled into a talent show my senior at Washington State playing football and baseball. Started on the football team. The talent show was the week of the Apple Cup. But my friends signed me up and they peer pressured me. It was on a Tuesday. And two weeks were about, it's two weeks until the thing and I didn't practice. So I got I was starting to panic because I got to come up with something. So what I did was I had a boom box in my room. Remember those things called burnt CDs? <laughs> had a burnt CD. And every night for like 10, 20 minutes, I would use imagery and visually rehearse myself, what I was wearing, I'd see the judges, the other students in the auditorium of the stage, and I would rehearse my routine. Opening, pre-chorus, chorus, verse two, pre-chorus, chorus, you know, the, the bridge, the breakdown. So I really, like, I, I would felt myself moving. So I literally choreographed my performance in my mind. But I did it, I was using, again, it's called imagery, all my senses, sight, sound, feeling. When I got in that moment, Time to perform. I was like, I've been here before. I've already seen what the judges look like. I knew what I was going to wear. I felt my body move. So now I'm just going to trust and enjoy the moment. You guys want a sample? <laughs> you want a little something? I mean, you want a little taste? You want a little bit? <clears throat> they call me hand. Sicky, sicky, see hand. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Zero! Okay. I won the talent show, baby.